before you move to Ghana let's get to it so let's go over the first thing I took a little note so I can explain to you guys so as an American living in Ghana I want you to know there are some things that we're not used to as if we were in America and the number one thing on this list bribery mm. let's get right to it guys let me explain it to you very well no matter what you have when it comes to your credentials when you run into the police most times maybe 90 percent of the time they are going to try and charge you some form of bribery i'm not sure it's because their salary is low i'm not sure what the reason is and if you have an accent oh forget about it they're definitely going to try to charge you more so that's one thing you should prepare for when you move to Ghana as an American citizen. You will definitely pay, especially at night if you're driving and they have stops set up, you will pay them. I remember one time I was driving to Cape Coast and um, whenever you're going through the burials, um, they have different places where you're supposed to stop not every time they stop you sometimes they do if they're occupied by other cars then they'll let the cars that's coming up behind them just go through this particular time i saw that they were occupied so i tried to continue and go through and the guy was like you stop so i stopped and me i have my gun in driver's license so i provided the license with him he made me get out of the car and he was very upset for what i don't know so when i got out of the car they were harassing me telling me oh i think that i'm higher than them because i'm from america who told me to continue to drive and i went on to explain to them that not every time they don't stop each car so i wasn't sure if they were going to stop me or not so i was just trying to continue to go because i thought they were occupied so they were very nasty to me and i didn't pay them this day because i refused after the way they treated me but i really felt like if i was in the u.s dealing with police officers and that is not the experience i wanted to experience in ghana but me i love ghana i even have a place in ghana so i'm going back so i won't let that stop me from being in ghana but it is something that you should prepare to deal with when you're there and the second thing i want to advise you guys about as an american citizen here in america we pay our rent month by month in ghana they say that you're only supposed to pay six months but most landlords mandate a year worth of rent which rent cost is lower than it is in the u.s but if you're not prepared to pay the whole year then you won't be getting an apartment <laughs> unless you're going there to build and uh not everybody is going there right away to build when you go there you're trying to fill out the area you're trying to see if this is a place that you want to live you're trying to see if the environment the people the culture is something that you can get used to so not everybody wants to build as soon as they get there so you should prepare to pay for that year worth of rent i hope you're ready so number three on the list is wi-fi y'all <laughs> You know how we use Wi-Fi over here in America. Like we we watch Netflix, we do everything, YouTube, we listen to music on our devices. Mm -mm. You ain't doing all that in Ghana, okay? So you might as well get ready for not being able to have access to your Wi-Fi as much. Um, you can still use it for like location, navigation, things like that, but you're gonna pay. And sometimes I hear rumors it didn't come from me i never had to experience it that mtn be stealing your data so you know it's just something i heard i don't know how accurate it is i never experienced it myself but other gunyans have told me that mtn steals their data i don't know if they use all their data and then they accuse mtn of stealing it. 
I don't know. So you didn't hear that from me. But that's something that you should prepare for is not being able to use your phone and your devices as much as you would if you were in the States. Not being able to watch Netflix and um, stream on Facebook and Instagram as much as you would if you were in the States. You still have access to that stuff, but you're going to pay, child. You're going to pay. you definitely going to pay. Okay. Now, this one is the fourth one on the list. But this one is the one that I can't, I can't get my mind around how it's actually accurate, okay? So, it's gas prices. Do you know that over in Ghana, you're paying per liter? In America, we pay per gallon. So, I'm thinking, oh, okay, they're paying per gallon over here. And when you look at the equivalent of 10 cities and 80 pesos, it's just like, oh, okay, that's not that much in the U.S., no, 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 no. It's liter, okay? So when I did the math, right? When I left Ghana, I just left on, what did I leave? April 1st is when I got back to the US and today is April 12th. But when I left, the city was decreasing to the dollars. So that means that prices were going up. Inflation was definitely taking place. So when I left, the prices of gas was 10 cities and 8 pesos. And I'm like, okay, that's not bad. They're paying that for the gallon. Then the guy was like, the gallon? That's not the gallon. That's per liter. I'm like, oh, no. Liter? 